Hey guys, uh, welcome to my channel, Data Driven Decision. In this channel, I talk about the data science and machine learning kind of stuff. If you're done for that, please subscribe to my channel and see different kind of awesome videos I make uh, for data science. So today's topic is just the successor of our previous video. It's all about the function. So in previous video, we talk about the how the function creates in how to function created in Julia and Python both. And if you don't see that video, you can just click on that card above and see that particular video. So today is just a successor of that video. And we're going to see how to use the arguments in the function. OK, so argument means basically the input of a function. OK, so that particular argument you can change every time. So you can see this uh, over here. If I go, I can show you. So this is the name. This is the argument I'm providing over here. And this is the function, right? I've given the name of the function, print my name dynamic, and I've given the argument, argument over there. So if I just uh, click on this, if I just basically run this function, okay, let me first clear that out. Okay. So if I just run this function, you can see that I have defined the particular function. Now I'm going to execute that function. So for that, how I'm going to do that? for that you have to i have to write it basically the name of the function and inside of that as an argument you have to give the name as an input so if i just run this you can see that i'm able to get the output it's a region basically because it's a notebook it is going to show you the output but in normal it is not going to show that output. you have to use a print function so over here you can see that I have used this dynamicity on that function. So I can change the name of it. So it's going to give the different different values. Okay. So I can put it like a name equals to this, or I can just simply put the name over here. I don't have to mention the name equals to. So that is what I'm showing here. So Sam run. Okay. So if I want to see so more same same person, different names. Okay, so if I run this here is going to give the different outputs so that's the dynamicity of a function so you can change the dynamic characteristics of the function you can give different different inputs of the function and it is going to provide you different different outputs based on the inputs you provide okay so, so in the next cell what i'm going to show you is that over here you just put the string as an input but the same function you can just put anything like you can just put the number like one two three four i have provided but still it's going to give you the output but the the function do not know what you put in inside of the function okay in general but you can customize it based on your requirements so that is what the flexibility of python okay, or any programming language for function is that or mostly in python and this dynamic language is that you don't have to put the uh type of that input variable okay so you can see that it's showing as an output okay that is what you have provided here so there i am creating another uh, function income tax finder so you just put your income and it takes the 15 percent of default tax rate and give you the tax out of that income that is that i have pre provided here so if i run this cell so you have given this uh, two lakh as an income okay so what will be the tax out of it so you said only thirty thousand uh in tax you have to provide an income tax in this way using this particular formula so over here i've given a constant 15 percent uh income tax rate okay but i can also change that income tax rate based on the different different income tax on different different countries so how i'm going to do that so over here income tax finder dynamic Okay, so there I have given the income and the tax percentage. Okay, so I have defining this particular function and also I can change the income and the tax percentage basically. So over there it was a constant 15%. So now I've given to the 30%. So if I just con convert it to the 15 again and if I run it, it is going to save that, uh, it is going to give that output as 30,000. 30, so what is the 15% of 2 lakh? It's going to be 30,000. Okay, so we can save the output of the function in the case of the return statement. So over here, what happened is that I have used the return statement over there. Okay, so it is going to save that output if you want to put it in a particular variable. But you can also use the print function. So you can see that 
I have written that output. So 30 percent would be six thousand, right? Sixty thousand. If I run this, it is going to be sixty thousand. So I have saved that particular output of the function inside of this particular variable tax value, and then I print that particular uh, variable to showcase the output of that particular function. Okay. So I hope you are clear all about right now. So another thing I'm going to show after that is that you can put the default value itself inside the function but it also will change in python so what what i mean is that over there you can see that you have given the income and also if the tax percentage equals to 50. so if you don't give the tax percentage implicitly then it is not going to execute that percentage so it is going to take the default 15 percent percentage so if i just run this cell and if i run this cell again 30,000 because I have given the 15% over there. Okay. That is why it takes take the 15% and calculates that tax. But you can also define it. Instead of 15, you want to take the 30%. So for that, what you will do? You just uh, write that function and you have to give the income and the tax 30. So instead of 15, it is going to take the 30 right now. So I'm overriding the existing value, our default value. So that is what I'm doing over here. If I run this cell, you can see that it's giving the 60,000 now. So that is the difference. Okay. So now I'm going to show the same uh, structures in Julia. Only the difference is the methodology, everything is same. Only the difference is the structure is little different in Julia. That's it. Nothing else. So you can see that the structure different means you have to just use, use the end at the end. Okay. That's the only difference. And another one is that you don't have to use the parenthesis over here. You have to just give the function name. You do not have to give any parenthesis. Uh, you have to uh, tab, you have to keep the indexation and at the end you have to use end. So that's the structure, function structure in Julia. The same thing I'm going to write it here. You can see that I'm going to print my name. So dynamic name I'm using. Okay. Okay, so one thing is that in Julia, uh, you cannot write like this, like name equals to Samka. You, you have to only use the name itself. Like in Python, it was, you can write it like this. Like either you can write it like this or you can write it like this. But in Julia, you have to write it like this only. You cannot write it like this. That is why it's showing the error. That's another difference you have seen. So the flexibility is same. Like you can put anything inside of a function. So it's going to give you the output. Okay. So again, you can see that income tax default value. Okay, same output it is going to provide it. Okay, same thing. But in as I said, you that's the one thing you cannot do in Julia. Like uh, you cannot put the name equals to this something inside of a function parenthesis. But also you cannot use the default arguments in Julia. It's so like over here. You can see that like uh, tax percentage equals to 15. That you cannot use in Julia. I'm showing you through the thing. It is uh, showing their output. Okay. But you can see this showing the error because you cannot give the one value only. You have to use the different values over here. Like it is not taking that uh, default value inside of a function. So you have to ex explicitly Define that uh, percentage of tax over here in that particular use case. Okay, so if I write it like this, if I just 15, then it will take. It will not take. So I hope you like the video. It's all about the Julia. It's little early language, so that is why there are a lot of confusions are there still. But so I hope uh, through this journey of Julia and Python, you about to get some information so which will help you in your data center i hope you like the video if you like it please subscribe to my channel and see different kind of videos i mean uh, i'll see you soon with a new video thank you